Hello and welcome to a Vector Tuts Quick Tip screencast. My name is Cheryl Graham. This video is a compliment to Yaroslav's Quick Tip from last month, in which he compares the new Image Trace in CS6 with the old Live Trace in CS5. I thought those of you who prefer videos might like to see the new Image Trace in action. So let's take it from the top. I have a linked photograph placed in my document, and I'll just click the Image Trace button, and boom! Now, I'm willing to bet that nobody in the history of Live Trace or Image Trace has ever clicked this button and said, yep, that's exactly what I was going for. In my opinion, this button is just taking up space. You can click this triangle to see more presets, but they're not particularly useful either, because rarely is Image Trace a one-click solution. However, once you click the button or one of the presets, you get a second button that lets you access the Image Trace panel, where you can have more choices and control. I'd rather just have one button to get to the panel, but you can always go to Window Image Trace. I'll undo this trace, and here's something new about CS6. The panel can remain open if you undo the trace, or even when you're working on other things. OK, so at the top we have a row of icons that represent some tracing presets. The icons aren't necessarily intuitive, so until you memorize what they are, make sure your tooltips are turned on so you can see each icon's label. First is Auto Color. This is a new feature in CS6 that I like. You can press and hold this button to see your source image. That is very handy. Next we have High Color, and that's going to take a little longer to trace. And that's pretty impressive. But this is something I don't get. There are presets along the top, and then there are more presets in the drop-down menu. This is called High Color, and it has a camera icon. Let's see what High Fidelity Photo does. Well, it appears that it is exactly the same. So I'm not sure why they put both presets in there. Moving along to the Low Color preset, we see the maximum number of colors used is set at 16, and indeed we have 16 colors in the trace. So how does this compare to Low Fidelity Photo? Now we see that the language in the tooltip has changed to Color, Accuracy, and Percentage. But the words more and less remain. And as a stickler for language, I have to take issue with that. More and less don't really refer to percentages. You don't say, I want more percentage, or I'm going to use less percentage. Anyway, there is some accuracy algorithm at work here. If I move the slider to the left, I get fewer colors, and to the right, well, it's no longer low fidelity at this point, is it? We see that the preset name has changed to Custom, which it will do whenever you tweak any of the preset settings. You can save your own settings, and we'll go over that in a bit. Moving along to the grayscale preset, and here we have a bug. The tooltip says maximum number of grays used for tracing, but we can see that there are 125 grays, not 50. If I set it at 10, we get 70 colors, and even if I set it all the way to 0, which doesn't really make sense, we still get 49 colors. So it looks like you can't specify a precise number of grays, despite what the tooltip says. Let's hope they fix this in an upcoming update. There is also a grayscale preset in the drop-down menu, called Shades of Gray. The default settings are identical to those in the grayscale preset at the top, so again, we have two presets, one in the row of icons and the other in the drop-down menu, that do the very same thing, but have different names. It's confusing. OK, on to black and white. Now the slider changes to Threshold, and again, less and more seem inaccurate. Higher or lower is probably what it should be. 128 is dead center, since in computer graphics we deal with 256 levels of gray. Well, 255 plus 0. So every value below 128 will be read as black, and every value above it will be set to white. Here's something I like in general about CS6. I can use my mouse's scroll wheel to change the values in any box and watch it update on the fly. So you can fine-tune the settings very easily and quickly. Again, we have a preset in the drop-down menu that appears to be identical to the black and white one, but it's called Black and White Logo. Black and White Logo was a preset in the old Live Trace in versions CS2 through CS5, so maybe that's why it's there. But I think it's redundant. Finally, we have the Outline preset. It too has a threshold setting. For this image, it's not so useful, 
And that's why we have different presets, of course, because depending on your original image, you're going to use a different starting point. The outline preset appears to be the same as the line art preset from the drop down. And then there's the technical drawing preset, which is similar, but with more straight lines. Here's a ballpoint pen sketch of mine that I'm going to use to try out the sketched art preset. I have to adjust the threshold to get a better balance of light and dark, and it does a pretty good job without too many paths. But if I want to try to get some of the finer detail, I'll have to go to the advanced settings. First is paths, with a higher percentage resulting in a tighter fit to the original. So if I set it at 100%, I get more detail, and if I turn it all the way down, you can see it's a looser fit. Having more corners versus curves doesn't do a whole lot in this image, so I'll put it back in the middle. The noise setting is what used to be called minimum area in Live Trace. You can see it's measured in pixels, and this refers to the minimum shape in pixels that Illustrator will trace. It's a little confusing because a higher value results in less noise. So if I put it all the way up, you can see that the trace is simplified, and if I set it all the way down to 1, it'll pick up some of the finer details in the original. I maybe don't want those tiny bits, so I'll move it up just a little. You can see that I've checked Ignore White, which in a black and white trace leaves me with just one color, black. Now I'll expand the trace, and here's something that's weird. If I view in outline mode, you'll see this frame around the trace, which has a fill and stroke of none. So I'm going to have to find all those other shapes with no stroke and fill and delete those. This is new behavior with CS6, and I really don't know why it does that. If we go back to CS5, I can access the panel from the drop-down here without first selecting a preset, which is nice, and I'll choose Hand-Drawn Sketch. I'll click the preview and I get this weird trace made up of strokes. I'll change that to fills and it's starting to shape up but I'll try and adjust the settings to match what I have in CS6. I'll make the path fitting tighter and reduce the minimum area, and that's looking pretty good. I'll check Ignore White, then click Trace, then click Expand, and you can see that we only have one object that's filled with black. There is not an extra set of paths with a fill and stroke of none. And here are the two traces side by side with the original. I kind of prefer the CS5 trace, but this is only one example, and they're both pretty good. Another new feature in CS6 Image Trace is the two different methods for tracing. I have a simple RGB file linked here, and I'll just click Auto Color, which gives me four colors, including white. I'll check Ignore White, and now I have three. The first method I'm going to use is called Abutting, which is what all previous versions of Live Trace did. This creates cutout paths, and if I expand the trace, you'll see what I mean. Each color is cut out from the one below it, so in this case we get these donut shapes. And even though I clicked Ignore White, I'm still getting this extra path with a fill and stroke of none where the white would have been. The other new method is called Overlapping. I have to stop here and say that these buttons kind of bother me. Right now the button on the left is selected, but they've made it darker in its pressed state, which to me looks like it's inactive. The brighter one on the right pops out, but it's the one that's not selected. I find myself clicking my selection twice just to make sure. It's a bit of a nitpick, I realize, but whenever I have to make unnecessary clicks, I get grumpy. Anyway, the overlapping method does what it says. It creates stacked paths. You'll notice that Ignore White is grayed out with this method. I'll expand it, and now you can see that each object overlaps the other, no cutouts. And there's even the white square behind everything else. So that's very cool. Now, when you have a more complicated image like this sunflower, you can't expect Illustrator to figure out which petal goes on top of the other and create perfectly stacked paths. I'll just use the low color preset, and the default setting for that is abutted paths. I'll zoom in and view the outlines, which you can see line up with one another. Now when I click Overlapping, you can see that the paths extend slightly beyond one another. I'll expand the trace and select the blue shape, and you see that it is sort of tucked underneath the yellow shapes. And that can be very good if, for example, you want to smooth or simplify any paths. 
if these paths were abutting, then you'd be left with white gaps when you altered any path. So this is a welcome new feature. In conclusion, I think that there are some improvements in Image Trace and CS6, but there are also some bugs and some other things that I find really frustrating. It's a pretty amazing technology when you think about it, but in the end, it's just like any other tool, and if it works for you, then great.